I'm not surprised. <laughs> All right. Welcome to this bonus edition of Chingasso's Combat Crew. It's our UFC 298 Parlay Super Show. I got my boy Fonzo right here down below. My dude, you ready to jump into this show? Hell yeah, and it's let's crack and talk about what's not only, here. I got the official bangers list on the screen right now. Let's go over the prelims. Uh, not everything on the screen is up considered an official banger, but still some fights that we might, might want to talk about. Uh, Rinya Nakamura taking on Carlos Vera. Carlos Vera, I know it's bolded out if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, you could see it's like a big buff dude, but it's dude is... Goes by the nickname of Pequeño Dog. So just <laughs> to let everyone out there know, uh, he's not a big dude. Right after that, though, the big boy's coming up to the plate. Marcos Rogerio. I got my teeth fixed to Lima. Taking on <laughs> Justin. I'm going to whoop that ass. Tafa. And this one, Bonzo, is an official Chingasos Combat Crew banger. They're, both of these dudes are going to be here for a good time, not a long time. So stay tuned. It's probably going to be uh, a one hit or quitter, like a one round banger for sure. And then the main event of the prelims, Amanda Lemos taking on Mackenzie Dern. Not an official banger, but it should be fun to talk about. And then the main card, nothing but bangers. Fonzo Anthony Fluffy Hernandez taking on Roman Kopilov. Marav, our Mexican now, Davishvili taking on Henry <laughs> Cejudo. Joff Neal. Taking on Ian Machado, Gary, Robert Whitaker taking on Paulo Costa, and then Alexander, don't call me an old man Volkanovsky, taking on Ilya Tuporia. I don't know if you really want to pick any of these, Fonzo. We don't have to go. We're going to do our usual. Dude, I, I got the piece. I don't know if you're going to touch one. this one. Yeah, hell, I, hell yeah. Are I you? All right. Let me get my notebook here, Fonzo, and I'm ready to go. All right. Actually, I, don't I just have you know what I wasn't gonna touch it originally, but I like the odds, man. I like the odds. you like the odds. Let's take a look at them real quick here. So let's look at their records. Both of these guys are fresh in the UFC. Uh, Nakamura is a gigantic, gigantic favorite here. Uh, he does have one official win, actually two official wins in the UFC. Uh, last one was a unanimous decision win over Fernie Garcia. And then before that, he had a KO win in round one over Toshiomi Kazama. His homie, there he is, there he is Pequeño Carlos Vera. Uh, not, I think he's only had one fight in the UFC, and that got canceled. So this is going to be right. his first official fight in the UFC. Let's take a look. I was like, so my book has got dog. Nakamura as a heavy minus 1,200 favorite. And Pequeño Carlos Vera, a plus 675 underdog. Fonzo, you said you're touching this? Oh, yeah. Which one are you going with? What are you going with, my man? Um, I'm I'm going for uh, Carlos Vera. Um, I'm going based on um, by the money line. I'm just going to do a straight money line bet. All right. So that'll be 100 bucks plus 675 But I honestly think that his path, to victory is going to be sub man i was looking at his record he's got some subs in his in his in his record so i think if he's going to win he's going to win that way all right so you're just, that's how you're picking i'm going i'm not going to touch this one money wise but i i would imagine nakamura is just going to steamroll this dude man i'm with vegas on this one so this guy's coming in with a lot of hype he's supposed to be like a like a, just like a phenom in japan dude so he's coming in with a lot of heat Again, not touching it, but I'm taking Nakamura. All right, I'm just sticking. I'm just. I'm not betting with my heart, man. I'm gonna just gonna go with what I think Vegas Mr. is Frank. going with, and I'm going with my mind on this one. I'm not 
All right, man. Talk we'll see. We'll, we'll see if me. that if that Talk plays not if that plays in your favor this talking. time. All right, Fonzo, take the reins on this one. Introduce. All right. So this time we got Marcos Rogerio de Lima taking on Justin Taffa. Um, 38, tail of tape is 38, four uh, years old for Marcos Rogelio de Lima, 34, Justin Taffa. So Justin Taffa is a younger cat here. They're about the same height, um, although Justin Taffa does edge out uh, Marcos Rogelio de Lima with a few pounds. And their reach is pretty similar, 75 to 74. Um, Leave Justin Tapa's Peroni situation out of this, Fonzo. Just stick to the breach, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. So, my, the Lima has a slight advantage in reach. Uh, very slight. But I don't think that's going to play a factor in this fight at all. All right, bro. Let's look at their records here. As we said, uh, I, this, I don't – I might have messed up because this is not – this doesn't show his last loss. I cut, It got cut off. So I know he fought Derek Lewis last and got his teeth knocked in. And I don't know if that Ben Rothwell fight is the last fight he had prior to that. He had one with Wal Waldo Cortez Acosta. Okay. And he and won he... that via decision. All right. That was in 2023 as well. And then he beat Andre Arlovsky. By decision. round one. Oh, round one? Oh, yeah. sub his ass? Yeah. All right. And then before that... Uh, Black, uh, what is he? Blagoy Ivanov. Okay. So he's got plenty of fights after that one. Pretty he's active. Yeah, he's been pretty active. All right. And here we have he just fights a year since 2022. He, he KO'd Austin Lane in his last fight in the last, last trip in the octagon. But before that, he had that nasty eye poke. And then before yeah. that, back to back KOs, dude. One KO over Paca Porta. And then the KO by head kick over I Harry. remember that. Hunsucker, bro. All in round one. Look, he has not gone out of round one in his last four fights, bro. If yeah. you want to count that, no contest. 29 seconds worth of round one. All right, let's check out the money line here. Money line is coming in on Marcos Rogerio de Lima at minus 145. Tafa at a plus 125, bro. Tafa by submission, plus 1,600. I could totally see Tafa landing a uh, KO, you know, a one hitter quitter, but I could also see Rogerio doing that. My so best the question bet, is which one is which one is most likely to do, bro? It? You don't know. Like honestly, either one of these guys I, has the potential to hit that that one shot KO or to deliver a shot that's going to send the guy to the mat, and then they're going to follow it up with shots. And then Jason Herzog watches and he's like, "Where did I park my car? <laughs> oh shit, I'm refing a fight again. Stop it." So I'm going with the under on this, bro. I would just I would just say that this is gonna go at under a round and a half, but at minus one sixty, that's not really worth it. Yeah, it's not gonna pay off, man. Yeah, no, it's not. Like you put a hundred bucks on that, you yeah. You're not even gonna break even. No, you won't. But if you pick one or the other, that's where your money could go. Yeah, so Vegas seems to think that it's most likely that Top is going to get the KO versus Rogelio. Yeah, plus one fifty. Yeah, are you touching this one or what? I am. Where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going Tafa KO. Tafa at plus one fifty. Plus one fifty. One hundred. Yeah, hundred. All right, dog. Go for it. Go for it. I think I'm going to say. My point, my some money for this next one. All right. Uh, this is the main fight of the prelims. A man number three ranked Amanda Lemos taking on Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie, both of these ladies, I believe, are coming in off of a loss, and not just like a normal loss, like they got the dog shit beat out of each other both times. Amanda Lemos got the dog snot. Remember when she got her ass whooped by Zhang Wei Lee? That was like oh, total domination, dude. Total domination. And then Mackenzie Dern got freaking her head knocked off by uh, who was it? Andrage. Not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. So the one thing that Amanda Lemos does not have in her favor is time. She is 36. 36 fighting at 115 pounds. I don't know how that, how. 
I mean, is that is that good for her long wise? She's 13, 3, and 1. Let's take take a look at her record. She last lost by unanimous decision to Zhang Wei Li. Went all five rounds, dude. So the only positive that came out of that is that she could take an ass whooping, dude, because that's what it was. <laughs> she got the brakes be off of her. Remember, she got caught in that crucifix and was just taking shots. But before yeah. that, check that out. She was on back-to-back -back wins, TKO win over Marina Rodriguez, and then it's that sub over Michelle Watterson. But she was totally outclassed in that one. And then before that, she lost to Jessica Andrade by standing arm triangle, bro. Caught up against the cage. Let's take a look at McKenzie's record. McKenzie coming in with that TKO loss to Jessica Andrade in round two. And then before that, she had a drag out back and forth fight with Angela Hill, but she ended up winning by unanimous decision. And then before that, she had an L to Yan Xiaonan. And then before that, though, she squeaked out a split decision over Tisha. Mm -hmm. Let's check out what Vegas says. Let's look at my bookie. My bookie has Amanda as a minus 125 favorite. McKenzie as a plus 105 dog. Over under on this is at plus 100 at the over. So Vegas is thinking this is going to finish in less than two rounds or inside of two rounds. I like, I like that plus 170 Amanda Lemos, bro. Yeah, I could totally see a repeat of what happened to Mackenzie last time around. Okay. So I'm going to go Amanda by KO Hunt $100. And then that's at plus 170? That's at plus 170. All right. Uh, I, for this one, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to play the I'm going to play the over on this at plus 100. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's going to, I don't know who's going to win. I could totally see Lemos just fucking blasting McKenzie again. I mean, I almost feel like, and, and remember, dude, McKenzie's taking this on short notice because this wasn't the original plan. I believe this was supposed to be uh, Amanda Lemos and I can't remember who it was, but McKenzie just took this not too long ago. Yeah. And who knows if she's fully recovered from getting TKO'd by a man, Jessica Andrade last time around also. So think about that. Yeah, so, but I also I also think that this could be – this is going to be th – this could just very well be over five – I mean, over three rounds. You know what I mean? Like, it, it could just drag on in the fight. It could easily be one of those fights. I so, need to stand up, dog, for these because I need to stand up. We're getting into the main card now, the main portion, bro. Thank God for standing desk, bro. Oh, okay, if you're standing, I'm standing. Okay. All right, Fonzo. Yeah. You ready to get into this freaking main card, my man? Let's go. All right, let's get into this, bro. I've been studying tape all day. Oh, so check this shit out. How many of you guys out there ever had to deal with uh, jury duty? Fonzo, you ever had to report for jury duty? Fuck that, man. Seriously, bro. Every single time I've gotten a jury notice, I've only had to report like maybe two or three times. And those few times that I have had to have to go, I always come up like, oh, no, nah, bro, I'm racist. Or, no, nah, I can't get the time off. <laughs> Whatever. But I've always gotten off. Well, this time around, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to see how far I can go. So I made it past round one. And this was like a month ago, dude. So then they're like, hey, report back on the 15th. So I'm like, dude, that's like a month away. But they also said, call every day to see what's up. I'm like, all right. Dude, I called every day for like the first 10 days. And every day just kept saying, report on the 15th. Report on the 15th. Guess what I stopped doing? Stop calling. Oh. So I show up today. Guess what? Yesterday they canceled the trial, bro. So I told them at work I had jury duty when I really didn't. So now I got to use a sick day, but I spent all morning going to jury duty when I could have been doing some gi. <laughs> I know. That's the worst shit, dude. Whatever, man. Let's get you know what it. really grinds my gears? Yes, exactly, dog. Exactly. So I ended up spending the rest of the afternoon basically just watching film. So I was watching. I watched basically every single Fluffy Hernandez fight. And then the two or three Roman Copula fights that are in the UFC with ESPN Plus because stupid ass UFC Fight Pass was down all day. 
All right, so here we are. We got the tail of the tape on the screen. You all right there, my man? Yeah. yeah. All right. They're both pretty. Actually, I can't even go over tail of the tape because uh, it still had Ikram up on the screen. So let's just pass that, all right? Let's look at Fluffy's record on the screen. He is on a one, two, three, four fight winning streak. Most recently winning, uh, beating Edmund Shabazian in round three by TKO. And, dude, that was going back and forth, bro, for a little while. Before that, he slept Mark andre Berial in round three arm triangle. Before that, dude, a really good fight against Josh Fremd, but he ended up getting a unanimous decision, decision win in that. And then the win that almost everybody knows Fluffy for is that Rodolfo Vieira submission win in round two, submitting a world jiu-jitsu champion, my man. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's take a peek at one of my fav personal favorite fighters, Roman Kopilov. This is the new up-and-comer in the UFC. He's only got one, two, three, four, five, six fights in the UFC. Started off on a bad start, two-fight losing streak, but since then, he's rattled off four wins in a row, including wins over Alessio De Chiqui Chirico, Puneli Soriano, Claudio Ribeiro, and Josh Frem, the same Josh Frem that Fluffy went three rounds with. Kopilov mm. got him out in two. But he was having trouble with the wrestling a little bit in the first round, dog. So what I did notice with Fluffy's game is he spams takedowns like an MF or dude, almost like Khabib style, kind of like. Like he hides the, his takedowns behind punches. He sets them up pretty clean. There's no long shots from across the cage. Everything is in really close. He likes to pressure people. His one loss, you'll notice, Fonzo, his last loss was against Kevin Holland. I watched that, and look, Kevin Holland got him out in round one, bro. It was quick. Kevin was Holland me? pressured him, dropped him with the knee, and then followed it up with shots. That's the yeah. only fight yeah. I saw. Where That's probably he, just a, like a poor time uh, takedown that, that Kevin Holland was well, able to Well, not only to that, though, but he allowed Kevin Holland to pressure him. He was, like, yeah. backing up. Okay. And in all the other fights that he's since then, he's the one taking control, dude. He's the one following his opponent, pressuring him, getting in the face. So when he's in his opponent's face, that's when he has his most success. And he's like I said, dude, he sets up his takedowns with strikes. He hides the takedown behind a left hand. He loves, he loves to throw that left hand and then immediately drop in for a single or a double, a high C. He likes to switch over to the single there. He gets you down. Once he gets you down on the ground, though, dude, he's not one of those guys who's looking for a position. He is looking to just break you. He's not pressuring you, pressure passing. He's dropping bombs. He's throwing knees. He's throwing elbows. He's throwing punches. And then not only that, he's constantly looking to see where your base is at. He's trying to get you off balance. He's trying to push you forward, throw you back. He's trying to make you move so that you open up. And then next thing you know, dude, you're taking an elbow behind the ear. You're taking two punches to the face. And then you got to cover up. And then he's got you on your back. And then he just continues down that road. All right, I'm, a, I'm at point A. Now I'm at point B. Now at point C. And then before you know it, dudes are in deep ass water. But my boy okay. here, Roman Kopilov, bro, he throws that left hand. Like a pitcher throwing a fastball down the pipe. It just, he's just constantly winging it out, dude. And one thing I did notice is although he is a southpaw, he doesn't throw jabs with that lead right hand. He throws like right crosses. Hmm. And he loves to throw left kicks to the body, dude. That's what sets up a lot of his, I mean, a lot of his um his KOs is he goes to the body a lot. People drop their hands, and then next thing you know, you're eating a crow cop kick. That's a problem, too, for a wrestler, man, because if he's going to the body, that can catch somebody coming in. But if you're not giving your him, if you're not getting giving him the space to throw that, then how is he going to get it off? Oh, so yeah. the battle here is going to be, is Kapilov going to be able to create the space to throw his patented high kick or his body kick? Or is he just going to have to use his hands to keep Fluffy away? Okay. And it's only a three-round fight, bro. So that's going to favor the grappler. This is classic grappler versus striker. 
Look at the money coming in heavy on Fluffy, bro. Minus 260 and the over under, dude. Look at the over. Minus 155 and the under one and a half rounds at plus 125. So I'm Roman really Kopilov to... is, 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 is an underdog here. That's interesting. Yeah, Kopilov is a big underdog, bro. Uh, I'm going to lay 100 bucks on Kopilov KO just because that plus 300 is, is tempting, bro. Tempting. So Kopilov KO. 100 plus 300. Although I don't believe that that's how it's going to play out, dude. I mean, I'm I'm only playing that because of the odds. But I, I think uh, overall here, Fluffy's going to get this W, and I think he's going to get it by decision. So I'm going to play another 100 on Fluffy at plus 260. That's super good, too. All right, Fonzo, you're up, my man. What's What you, what you doing? What you doing? All right, I'm just going to do... Dog's going crazy over there. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, shit. I think I'm just going to end up doing. I had a different. Dude, when I looked these odds up, they were different on my end. So I'm switching it they up. They were. I and I checked out. I checked out my bookie this morning and they had updated one. So I. Yeah. So yeah. I had this check. one. I, I think the line did move a little bit more in Anthony. Dude, when I was when I was checking is they were dead even like there wasn't. Like, the, the money line was, like, hardly any difference. I'm yeah, like, I'm that's not... what I'm saying. It's since look right. at where it's at now. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to do – I'm just going to do straight up 100 on copy law, just money down to the money line. All right, so you're going 100 on copy law. And that's a plus 210. Yeah. All right, bro. So you still got 700. I got 700 as well. All right, next five, bro. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go. This could be main event, bro. I cannot like Fonzo. Talk to everybody right now because I gotta take a walk. <laughs> so my man here is talking about Marab Davishvili versus Henry Cejudo, the king of cringe. So yeah, tail of the tape. We got we Look got we got tail of the tape for this one. Yeah, we got Marab coming in at 33 years of age. Henry Cejudo over the hill, according to most, at 37. Uh, height advantage goes to Marav. Weight identical, but also Marav has reach advantage 68 inches versus 64 for Henry Cejudo. So what do we got in terms of the records, Frank? All right, here we got Marav on the screen. And Marav has been on a tear going all the way back to 2018, dog. I can't even count that high, so I'm just going to talk about his big wins as of late. His biggest win recently, uh, Piotr Jan, last March, a five-rounder where he just was, I said it earlier, spamming takedowns. He was just takedown after takedown after takedown after takedown. I think I heard a crazy stat that said he averages like six-point-something takedowns per fight. Damn. So over, I mean, and normally he's fighting three rounds. So over three round, over a three round fight, he's averaging at a minimum two takedowns, sometimes more. Damn. So that means you're getting you're getting taken down, then you got to fight to get back up, then you're getting taken down again, and then exhausting. You gotta, yeah, dude, and that's just in the first round. Yeah, dude. But let me let me let me go back, man. Let me let me see if you noticed a pattern real quick. Have you right. noticed that ever since? Barab's got that got that Edgar haircut. He's been on this tear. Have you Bro, noticed? That? Yes. It's been like Samson, dude. It's just the Edgar cut. That's what's been doing it for him. Dude, and today, and bro, check this out. It's part of the culture. It must be the Edgar Mexican Marab thing because in the press conference today, he was like, Mexicans, you deserve a better fighter. And then he pulled out <laughs> something from his pocket. And he unfolded it, and it was a Mexican flag, bro. Check go. out our IG for that. I got a screenshot of it. Uh, Chingasso's crew, IG. Check it out. Always yeah, bro. Yeah, it's Marab Hernandez Davish really, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a, take a look at uh, Cousin Ant's boy's record here. <laughs> Trip Cheese, as Cousin Ant likes to refer to him as. Uh, took a layoff, took some time off, and came back and took a five-round L. To Aljamain Sterling, although it was a super close fight. A lot of people thought he pulled it off. 
but I thought it was a little too much for him to chew. I think he should have took in taken a, a warm up fight, some someone maybe like in the five to eight rank range, and then boom, title shot, or top five, someone in the top five, three to five, and then a title shot instead of just jumping into the deep water. Might have been too much too soon. And then really, can we even take into account everything before that? Because he took like four years, three years off practically. Well, I mean, I think it's still notable. You know what I mean? Like his record. I mean, because look at the people he's beat. You know what I mean? So it it does goes to show the caliber of fighter he he's he's been. I mean, a I, win. I over- would say his most impressive win is the Demetrius Johnson split decision win. I agree. And that was back in 2018. Almost six years ago, at least five and a half years. Yeah, but th- and then again, it, it like I said, Ben, he's five also and a half 30- years ago. I don't even know if we had PS5, bro. <laughs> he's also 37, you know what I mean? So, yes. like, that, that's exactly, I, I think, more than anything, it's his age. But, you know, I don't know, man. He's still, he's still a talented guy. Oh, I forgot to put the extras in this one. That's cool, man. We'll just go straight down the money. All right. All right, so what are you doing on this one? Are you touching this one at all? I mean, I'm going with Marab on this one, and this one's for sure going to go all three rounds, dog. I don't see a finish happening. And uh, Vegas has the over at a minus 350, and that is just way too steep for my pocket. So I'm not touching that. I have Marab Marab winning by decision. Just win. Just just putting it on him. So How much are you putting down on that? You're going to go 230 for 100, or you're going to go Damn, you know what? You know what? Never mind. I'm not touching yeah. this one. Never mind. Yeah, it's it's like, the money line changed because it was it was um it was less than that. Damn, never mind. Yeah, that minus 230 is totally like I'm not touching it, you know, just because it's not, I don't think it's really worth it. But on my long parlay already, I did I did throw in Marab. So if you want to get a little crazy and turn a set a uh, little three parlayer into a four parlayer, this I mean. I'm not going to say it's guaranteed, but there's probably a high percentage that he's going to be able to pull it off. Yeah. I mean, I just think like Marab's MMA wrestling versus Henry's wrestling. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see him being able to stop that game, dude. Right. Right. All right. All right, dude. Coco main event. We've been waiting for a minute on this one. Number eight, Jeff Neal taking on number 10, Ian Machado, Gary. Tail of the tape on the screen. Jeff Neal, 33 years old. Uh, Ian, 26. Jeff Neal, five foot nine. I did not know that. I thought he was a little bit taller. Ian Gary, six foot two. And then the reach advantage is pretty even with Jeff at 75 inches and then Ian at 74 and a half. Jeff Neal, 15 and five. And Ian Gary is undefeated at 13 and 0. Jeff Neal's record is on the screen right now. Coming in with that L that he took against Shafkot, dude. Surprisingly, went three rounds, just a little into the third round before he got choked out. But up until then, dude, he was fighting off Shafkot's takedowns, exchanging mm-hmm. with him, winning some of the, the exchanges. Actually, I thought, you know, he didn't really get into trouble until Shafkot started grappling with him, and then he really started imposing his will. And then before that, he beat Luke by KO. And then Ponzinibbio by split decision. And then back-to-back losses, dude. Look at that. Took an yeah. L to Neil Magny back in 2021. So is that an, is that a lot of, enough time for his game to have changed? Kind of did, no? Yeah. Like he's man, not, so. Definitely not the same fighter that he was back then, but he still has some of the same pieces. He's yeah. still kind of the same, right? Whereas Ian Gary, like, I hate to say it, bro. I want to see him to get his butt whooped, but I don't know. He just keeps leveling up and leveling up and leveling up somehow. He did go three rounds with Neil Magny. Wasn't able to get him out. And then before that, got the TKO win over Daniel Rodriguez. And then he's got some other wins over some other people there. By finish, you know, but no no notable wins there. And you can't really say like, oh, yeah, he beat the – I mean – he pieced up Neil Magny, but Neil was never in trouble of being finished in that fight, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember him, him being in trouble. Yeah. All right, Fonzo. I got my bookies 
uh, bets on the screen. Check it out. The money is coming in heavy on Ian Gary at minus 230. And Jeff at a big underdog at plus 185, bro. I'm going to play this one for sure, dude. What are I'm going to go. I'm going to hit the under at 100. Okay. That's plus 105. I'm going to hit the. Because I think if he, if if Neil is going to win this, it's going to be by finish, dude. He's going to. Because he does have that one shot power. So if he, if he can land a clean shot, I think he can take him out. And I think that $100 is worth the risk for a plus 265 return. Okay. Neil by submission? Nah. Neil by decision? Ooh, man. Plus 700, dude? Uh, that's what I'm doing. What the hell? I'm going to do that, too. That's what I'm doing. All right. So you're going to go Neil by decision? Yeah. And then I'll do Neil by KO. So Neil by the $200 on that. And then $100 on, on, ne on Neil by decision. $200 on what? Neil by decision. And that's plus 262. Two. No, plus 700. Oh, that's plus 700. And then I'm going to do 100 uh, Neil by KO. And that's a plus 265. 265, All right. All right, dog. I like it. I like it. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six. I got four hundred dollars left. What do you got? Two, three, four, five, six. También. Yep. All right, dude. Co-main event: Robert Whitaker, Paulo Costa. Robert Whitaker coming in with a record of twenty-five and seven. Paulo Costa fourteen and two. They're pretty much even in age. Robert Whitaker thirty-three. Paulo Costa thirty-two. They're about the same height, same weight, and even the reach is not that much of a difference. Robert Whitaker got that. 73 and a half inch reach and Costa 72 inch. Bobby Knuckles coming in with that last L against DDP where he got the break speed out of Damn. him for yeah. two rounds, dude. Then before yeah. that, he had a unanimous decision three round war with Vittori. It was just a takedown war, dude. Then yeah. before that, five round war with Izzy where he just got outclassed. But then before that, he was on a one, two, three fight winning streak dating back to 2020 with wins over Kelvin, Jared Cannonier, and Darren Till. So of those three wins that Jared Cannonier won, is looking pretty good. Then yeah. that was a unanimous decision win. Our boy Polo has not fought since August of 2022, where he had a three round war with Luke Rockhold, dude. I don't know if you remember that one, but it was uh, pretty uneventful. I think they were fighting in Utah, so they got gassed out pretty fast because of the elevation. Oh, that's but right. He did He did win. He did win that one. And then before that, he had back-to-back -back L's. One over Marvin Vittori. Five-round unanimous decision loss. And then when he literally got spanked by Izzy uh, back in 2020. Took Is that out. when he booty-bumped him? Yes. He got booty -bumped. Took, his took his virginity. <laughs> that stuff, man. <laughs> Dude, check it out. Paulo's been in this UFC for a while, man. He's got a win over Johnny Hendricks there. <laughs> All right, man. Here's the money line. Money is coming in at Robert Whitaker at minus 240. And Polo Cosa, a big underdog at plus 190. All right. What are you thinking on this one, dog? I'm going to lay 100 on Whitaker by decision at plus 105. That's a good bet. You know what? I'm going to split my bets. Go for it. I'm going to just do one. I'm gonna do a hundred uh, by KO at plus two sixty, and then a hundred by decision for Bobby right. Knuckles. All right, say that first one again. A hundred dollars on who? Bobby Knuckles by KO. That's plus two sixty. Two sixty. All right, and then what else were you gonna do? A hundred by decision, Bobby Knuckles plus one hundred five. All right, bro. I got three hundred left. I don't know if I really want to put Whitaker by sub. No. Costa by KO. Nah. Whitaker by KO. That one could totally happen. Yeah. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save my three for over here. All right, you got 200 left? Yep. All right, I got three. Main event time, Fonzo. Main event. Bruce Buffer, get us there, bro. Get us to the gate. Here we are. Alexander Volkanovsky taking on up and coming phenom Ilya Tupuria, El Matador. Alex Volkanovsky, 26 and 3. Ilya Tupuria, 14 and 0. 
Big age difference here, Fonzo. 35 versus 27. Is the 35 drought going to continue here? Uh, they're about the same height, same weight, obviously. And the reach isn't that much different. Volkanovski does have a slight reach advantage, 71 and a half versus 69, 69er, bro. Uh, let's look at Volkanovski's record on the screen coming in with that last loss by Islam. Remember, he got knocked out in the first round, and everyone's wondering if the Cowboys have been cleared, where his mind at. And then before that, though, man, he beat the dog snot out of Yair Rodriguez, who's yeah, a yeah. striking sniper, dude. Kicks, elbows, punches from everywhere. Went three rounds with him and was never, ever in trouble. Before that, that five-round war with Islam when he had a full camp to prepare. And then before that, dude, it's, it's a who's who of killers, and he took them all out. TK, mostly by decision, but he does have some finishes. Chan Sung Jung, Yair Rodriguez, Chad Mendez. Yep. And then Tuporia, man. Tuporia has not been in the UFC for very long. But he is undefeated, so he's finished. He's beat everybody, and he's almost finished everybody except for the first time in the UFC and his last fight in the UFC. So his last fight, in, last trip into the octagon was against Josh Emmett on UFC on ABC, where he too he just demolished Josh Emmett. Yeah. You know? The only thing, man, is if you look at it, this is this is going to be his toughest challenge. You know what I mean? Definitely, like dude. Yeah, like this is going to be the real, real test. As a matter of fact, I honestly would have liked to see him take on somebody else. Like, I want, I would have liked to have seen him fight Yair or Max. Right, that's what I'm saying. Before yeah. he takes on Volk, because then that would that would have answered more questions um, before this fight. But I'm not mad at it. I think you know. I mean, does he definitely not? Like, this is a fun fight, sure. dude. This is yeah. going to be a badass fight. So let's see where all the money is going on this. So you see that it's slightly coming in on Volkanovski at minus 125. To put you a slight underdog at plus 105. Bro, I'm going to lay all my 300 here on Volk by decision. Volk by decision. What is that? 200. What? Plus 200. Plus, that's a smart one. I, I don't see a finish here, actually. What do I have left? I got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to, yeah. I think I'm going to go... 200 on Alex by decision, and I'll sprinkle 100 on Tuporia. Tuporia by what? By decision, también. That's plus 400. That's a good. Yeah. Just that's a good chance you know. right there. I don't know, man. All right. I'm not going to change my bet. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to do 200 on bulk by KO. At plus two, plus two, plus two. So you're going, say that one more time, dog. 200 on bulk. By KO at plus 260. 200 Volk KO plus 260. Dude, that's what's up. That's Woo it. That's my house. All right. Well, that's it, dude. I was just thinking, dude, like, you're right, dude. Tupori has never faced an opponent like Volkanovsky. Someone who's, and then, dude, not only is Tupori fighting. Volkanovski, it's Tuporia's coach versus Volkanovski's coach. You know what I mean? Like, which coach is able to come up with a game plan that is going to better use their fighters' tools to their advantage? And who's been there more? Who's been there longer? You know what I mean? And then not only that, dude, I think that strength and size is really going to come play a key factor in this. This is, yeah, Tuporia's fucking strong and he's young, dude. Volkanovski used to weigh plus 200 pounds. He's got yeah. that frame still. He's yeah, just he a does. little bit smaller. So I'm really interested to see what this fight is going to look like when they're clenched up, when they're up against the cage, when someone's got an over-under and in the end, where the where is it going to go from there? You know what I mean? How I easily is yeah. Tuporia going to be able to get Volk off of him? Because he yeah, also I needs to, he's struggle. to throw his punches. You know what I mean? Yeah, and one and a, one thing that I did notice that Tuporia likes to do is he likes to go to the body with the left, and then he likes to follow it up with the right hand over the top, because people will be squared up, but he just 
finds that gap, dude, he goes to the body. What's going to happen to your guard? It's going to come down. As soon as he, know, he knows that, then he goes up to the top right away. But one thing that I did notice is every time he went to that, because he does it, he's done it more than once, dude. He finished Jai Herbert like that. He, I think he did that to Bryce before he dropped him. And then he was hitting Josh Emmett with that like all night long. But all those guys just stood right in front of him, dude. Like they don't yeah. have that movement, that Volk. Volk is constantly cutting angles and moving around. Right. right. Switching stances, going back and forth. You know, so I, I don't know. And even in the fight with Josh versus Josh Emmett, Josh Emmett's corner was able to see that Tuporia can only punch in a certain stance. So they kept telling him, I, I couldn't, I heard it, but I don't remember what it was. But he, they kept saying like, hey, go to your whatever, make him reset. Go to, I, I just, just say he said, go to your right. Go to your right, make him reset. Because when he would go that way, he couldn't adjust his power that way or something. So he had to try to get, Emmett back into a spot where he could use his power again. Mm -hmm. So it's not automatic all the time and it's not fluid. He's not able to throw those punches in any stance that he's at. Right. And then That's also good. earlier, dude, today in the press, in the press conference, like Tuporia just went full on heel, bro. Like telling the crowd to shut the fuck up, telling everybody you're going to fuck, like you're going to like me. Tomorrow you'll fuck on Saturday. You're going to see. I don't give a fuck. Dude, he even went as far as pulling a fucking copycat Conor McGregor and snagged Volkanovski's belt. Oh, shit. Yeah. So he went all in like that, bro. So I can't wait for Saturday, man. It cannot get here soon enough, my dude. It'll be fun, man. And, you know, the only thing I want to add to that is did you check out – did you see Volk's post? Like, and this is the thing, man. I love Volk. For the same reasons, man. Like, you know, like the fact that he went on and did the whole thing where he's old and shit. Dude, he, he showed up to the press conference like that. Yeah. But and no, he, he, he was talking. He pretended to fall asleep. He he also shared the story where he was like his his daughter was yes. uh, talking to him about about like, hey, dad, what, what if there's a, a robber that breaks into our house? And he's like, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm the world champ. I'll take care of it. And he goes, no, no. What if they break in and they try to harm me? And they're like, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. No, I'm world champ. And he goes, well, what if the robber is is a mock chip? That's just hilarious, man. Cold game. Even she knows who the real boogeyman is. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but it ain't Ilya, Saturday. bro. Nah, or it could be, man. We'll see. Have we'll to see wait on Saturday, Saturday man. So after this hits, while everyone's listening or watching this, one more sleep. Fonzo, closing comments, my dude? I'm excited, man. Can't wait. We'll see what the results are. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Let us know what your picks are. Uh, get in that. Uh, what's what's that app we use again, dog? I always oh, forget. Oh, Verdict. 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 Okay. Three, two. All right, stay tuned, and maybe we can post a little – verdict link so that everybody can share their picks or even just judge the fights all right all right everybody until monday when the regular episode drops tune in until then chingasso's combat crew out peace peace I'm not surprised.